What is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? This is the beginner's guide to everything you need to know. You're new to the art, you're a white belt. I'm gonna go through the most basic common positions. We're gonna go through basic submissions. And at the very end, I'll give you some movements that you can do by yourself or with a partner to improve your Jiu Jitsu. Stick around for the very end. I'm gonna show you some things that a beginner will never be able to do, but if you do, you'll make the highlight reel. Okay, so first of all, if you're new to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, one of the biggest tournaments out there is IBJJF. They tend to run the most and is the biggest organization. So what we're gonna do is quickly just go through the point system on that so you don't forget it, all right? So first thing, a sweep. A sweep has to be done with your legs. So for example, if I'm on top of Stuart in the mount position here, if he simply reverses me this way, this is not a sweep. It's a reversal, but there's no points. So a sweep has to be done using the legs. Maybe Stuart grabs me, butterfly guard, sweep, oh, two points. Now, another way I can score points is going into the mountain position. So maybe I'm passing Stuart's guard. I'm here, I pass, I get on top, my knee has to touch the mat with the other one. I'm on top for three Mississippis, about, and as long as I hold that in control for three seconds, I'm gonna score four points from this mount position. Another way you can score points, four points for the back mount. So let's say I get the arm drag, pull, get the back, I have both hooks in, harness grip, I don't have to choke, but as long as my hooks are in, I get four points for back control. You can also score two points for a takedown. As long as I hold him down for three seconds, I get the points. If I got him down and he starts fighting, framing, pushing away, gets to his feet, no two points for me. So within all of those positions, you can also score advantages, almost points. I kind of thought of it as half points when I started in the very beginning, but it's not quite a half a point. If the score is zero to zero and I get an advantage, I would win the match. And those advantages, in every scenario, they're there. So whether I, if I almost pass, the ref uses discretion and gives me maybe an advantage instead of a full point. Same with takedowns. I'm not gonna dive deep into that. That can get pretty complicated and there's a bunch of positions that you can get advantages in. That's more for the competitor. Okay, so like I said earlier, this is the mount position. This scores me four points. Now in the mount, there's a lot of different variations where you can go a knee down and a foot up. You can do an S type of mount where you're climbing up higher. You can even sit fully like this. So within the mount position, you're gonna find lots of sub positions in there, which are all great. But again, my goal when I'm in mount, I wanna to try to keep my knees down the best I can. My hands can be posted on the ground with my legs, my feet underneath the hamstrings, and then I'm pushing my hips, driving my hips down. Now my preference for mount is not only the hips, I like to cross face. Right now my spine is straight with his, I wanna get it off center and reach out. This arm is gonna be a really strong post. If Stuart tries to go and reach for it, it's gonna be strong and he can't pull it in. If I simply put it here, he can wrap that puppy up and he's gonna flip me over. So using the mount as a controlling position, heavy cross face, crush him with your shoulder, hand out, hips are down, he's going nowhere. Okay, another top position in Jiu Jitsu is called side control. So side control, there are of course different variations, very basic, you wanna to try to control the head, just like I said in the mount position, crush across. The second hand can come under and get an underhook. This is usually the preference, especially from the beginner, always trying to get this underhook and always trying to get the head. The last component here is, besides being chest to chest, you can see my knee is way high here. If Stuart drops his right arm, his right forearm between us and makes a wedge, this is gonna be where I start losing the position. So if you have side control, you wanna to try to keep this arm up, replace that space where his arm was with your knee and thigh. From here, it's gonna be very hard for him to not only reverse you, but just get out. Okay, another position in Jiu Jitsu that is super common is the guard. Now the guard is anytime my legs are between me and Stuart. Stuart's not in my guard. Stuart's in my guard. Not in my guard, he's in my guard. So the guard has a ton of different, different suppositions as well. I can do closed guard. This is the best thing you can probably learn at first. Crossing the ankles, excellent for self-defense. He's between my legs. Very tough for him to get past my guard at this point. My legs are locked around his waist. So here's our spider guard that we left off on. Again, a great position. You can also use this as a transition to go to butterfly. Butterfly guard is both of my feet, my hooks are on the inside. I can sit up, dig for an underhook, and from here, there's a plethora of sweeps we can do. 
The next position is turtle. Now, if I don't do a good job, for example, of holding Stuart from here in side control, I messed up and did get an underhook. Stuart's able to roll that way, and this is gonna be the turtle position. Turtle is, when he is kind of in a fetal position, he's protecting himself by keeping his elbows and his knees connected so I can't get his back and choke him. If he does a good job from here, and even tucks his elbows a little bit tighter, look, I can't get my feet in here, and if I can't get my feet in, he's pretty well protected from getting choked. A sometimes frustrating thing that happens at first is you start to go past, you think you're past, and all of a sudden they hook your leg, and when you get down, you discover one of your legs is between both of theirs. This is the half guard. I'm in Stuart's half guard. He's got my leg pinned between his legs. This isn't ideal for me, but both of us have a ton of options from here. So from half guard, one of my legs is between both of his. Just as a side note, from half guard, you can also play bottom person, half butterfly. He can put this hook right on the inside of my thigh, and he's got a lot of different things from here. It doesn't look like a half guard traditionally, but it's still considered a half guard. This leg can be laced over my leg, trapping it, and this one is hooking on the inside of my thigh, ready to sweep me. Back mount is a great position to get to. One of the ways you can get to back mount is you force somebody from mount to roll to their belly. So I start crushing his head, crushing his head, for example, getting him to turn. When both of my feet go in, and then I can either stay here, pull him on top of me, as long as both hooks are in, I've got a back mount. Another variation which you don't score points for is triangling your legs. This is great control, nothing wrong with this. Just know if you're competing, they're not gonna give you points for this. You have to have both hooks in. With that being said, you can transition, get your triangle, put your hooks in, get your four points, triangle if you feel like you're losing. Next position is gonna be knee on belly. One of the most common ways to get into the knee on belly is from side control. So I'm in side control here. I passed his guard, I scored my points, I held them. Now I can get two more points for going to knee on belly. What I can do is slide my knee up, my shin and knee are right about to his belt line. Different instructors will tell you to put it in different places, but for the purposes of this, we're just trying to put the knee on the belly. Second foot has to be posted up like this. When you first learn this, you may feel really unstable, but I promise, put the time in, you're gonna find a lot of stability. From here, you'll have submissions. If this was a street fight, I could punch or MMA, but this is a really dominant position. Although he can move, I can follow him. So that's where your training's gonna come in and balance. So if Stuart starts rolling that direction, I can follow, I can follow. Then look, we can go right to that back mount position that we discussed a second ago. So that's the knee and belly. All right, so now part two, those are all positions. Here are some very basic submissions. We'll start with an arm lock. This is closed guard, remember. I'm gonna grab my right arm to his right arm. What I can do is go foot in the hip, my leg, knocks him off so his posture is broken, and then my leg comes up over his head. This is one of the most common submissions from guard is an arm lock. You can also find this arm lock in different positions like the mount. So if we switch positions, another common position to do the arm lock in is from mount. So from here, I try to walk my knees up. Now look, it's like he's giving me one of his arms. I'm gonna pick his right. I like to push, make him look that direction. See how I lean this way? It makes this leg super light, easy to move. If I don't lean and I stay here, I'm gonna end up kicking him in the eyeball. So make sure, lean, leg is light. Here's our basic arm lock you'll see a lot from the mount position. Another basic entry in the arm lock is from the side control. Remember what I said as a beginner, you wanna constantly be finding this underhook. Once you have the underhook, you can pull him up on his side. My left leg steps over, I spin down, and here I am finding myself in another basic arm lock from side control. The mate leao, rear naked choke. What I'm gonna do from this position, I've already got his back. My top arm is gonna come up underneath his chin. The best I can, I try, try to draw the letter B, so the tip of my elbow is underneath the tip of his chin. My second arm comes and slides behind. What you don't wanna do is bring your arm like this, because if I go here, Stuart sees it, he's gonna grab it, hold it, and now I've missed the choke. So anytime you get the first arm in, second arm goes behind, this comes in, grabs your bicep, and here's the rear naked choke. Squeeze. Next submission, guillotine. This is one of my favorites. Here's our closed guard. I'm gonna turn my body, reach up, use my elbow so I don't have to use just my abdominal muscles. This is gonna loop over his head, come to his throat. My second hand's gonna feed in. 
And as I do this, instead of going straight back, a lot of times their head pops right out. Up, around, watch this. I'm gonna move my hips that way. I'm gonna take his forehead down to the mat. So I go here, so I scoot my hips, his forehead goes down, squeeze for the guillotine. My second favorite way of getting into the guillotine is from top side control. So from here, I try to hold my partner down. Inevitably, they're gonna position themselves and try to turn into you. So instead of turtling away, they're gonna come in. This is the perfect time to then go arm over, grab the chin, second hand can come in. You can either step over, and try to finish the guillotine from here, or if they bump up into you and reverse you, they reverse themselves right into the same guillotine I showed a second ago where his forehead is down on the mat and you've got this locked up. Okay, straight ankle lock. This may not be legal for you yet in competition, so check the rules. But an ankle lock, I could be standing and try to pass and when his legs open, instead of passing the guard, grab, I can sit, and here's our straight ankle lock. Basic, just get a foot right in the hip to prevent him from coming up. Other foot is tucked under. I'm gonna pressure right here. Submit him at the ankle. Okay, so just like the ankle lock, check your rule set. This knee bar may not be legal for you, but you have to watch out for it. So during a passing, I can go a back step, for example, sit back, grab the knee. I turn my hips right into his kneecap. Grab with both arms, cross the legs, push the hips, and we treat it just like an arm. I can pull. You can also do variations where you weave an arm over, and you can also get, you can get a ton of power from here as you pull and use your hips. So the knee bar, watch your knees. A Kimura is a shoulder lock. So from the guard, this is an easy way of getting it. Again, don't sit up and try to get your arm over. Use your elbow, and I'm gonna rock up. I have a really strong frame. I tuck this first. Second, I grab figure four. As I go back, I'm gonna take my hips out towards you guys. Hip out, hip out, hip out. Now all that's left is to take his palm and touch the back of his head. Here we go. Another shoulder lock you can do to your opponent is an Americana. His left arm, my left arm. I'm gonna press it all the way down to the ground. My elbow touches the mat right next to his ear. Second arm feeds under, grabs your own wrist. Now I need to keep his hand down on the ground as I pull his elbow back. If his hand comes up and I pull his elbow back, he's got a lot of freedom and mobility there. It doesn't hurt him. I pin this down. And in fact, this used to be called the paint brush. This is the brush. I want to paint the ground with it as I lift his elbow up, 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 back towards my knee. Let's talk about some basic movements as a jiu-jitsu athlete you need to be able to do. Now, these are pretty easy overall. Stuart's going to demonstrate them without any loaded movement anybody on top of them. So just by yourself, these are great drills to do. First, a wrestler's bridge. The first thing you do, you're gonna bring your heels to your butt. You're gonna come up on the balls of the feet, lift your hips as high as you can, and then finally arch up, and you see this big arch, he's up on his neck, on his head, nothing staying on top of him. Second, Stuart's gonna come back down. In jiu-jitsu, you don't necessarily need that because you're not worried about getting pinned. You wanna get somebody off of you. So the feet can stay farther away from the butt. You're gonna go up on your heels. The toes can even uh, be pulled up. If you can pull your toes off the ground for one second, just like this, to demonstrate all the weight's gonna be in your heels. So you're not flat-footed, you're not on the balls of the feet, more weight's on your heel. From here, you're gonna take your hips and you tuck it under. And then finally, you're gonna move, let's say someone's on top and he wants to bridge them off that direction. He's gonna move his head this direction first, create a big opening here, and then finally he's gonna bridge up over the shoulder, and you see this is an angle that you're gonna take the person over, that's perfect. Now try the other side, Stuart. So his head moves the opposite way, creates, yes. And you can see if you're on top of somebody while they're doing this, if you can reach a couple more times just like that back and forth, this is gonna have the person on top be destabilized. They're gonna lose their balance, post their hand, or they go tumbling over. So much different than a wrestler's bridge, it's almost turning instead of a full bridge up. Another basic movement that's taught in a lot of jiu-jitsu schools is the shrimp. This is a great way to learn, especially when I have to teach kids. This is perfect. You have your partner stand right over your hips. So you can see his feet are side by side on me. When I do a shrimp, the first thing I do is I want to turn. And I tell, again, if I'm teaching kids, I tell them to turn. Make your body as skinny as you can. So now here, if Stuart pushes his feet in, right now I feel pressure on both sides. I can't just get out. I have to first turn. This makes the student turn 
get skinny. And now look, this is extremely easy. I put my hands right on his shin and I push my hips out, escaping from out underneath him. And then as a drill, we can do this up and down the floor. I lay flat on my back, he walks forward, and I always encourage the standing person to squeeze the feet in, that way it makes me turn. If I just try to go like this wrong, I'm gonna feel resistance. As soon as I, I'll do the other side, I turn, my hips come out, there's no resistance there, and then in reality, I would be getting my guard back. So if Stuart passes my guard, pushes my legs down, I go hands, shrimp, legs come back in between us, and I'm safe, shrimping. Okay, now building off that shrimping motion, after you shrimp and you're out with your guard, maybe this was a self-defense situation, you kicked the person away, you got to safety. So if Stuart backed up just a little bit, now I feel, yeah, I feel like now I can scoot away and start to stand up. So the technical stand up, from this position, what I'm gonna do is practice rocking, again, using my elbow, this hand comes up for safety. So maybe I have to block a punch or it's just him reaching in to grab me. Then I can come up, post on my hand, I always scoot away, and again, if I'm teaching kids, it's three scoots. I go one, two, and then on three, I'm gonna do my technical stand-up. My bottom leg here is gonna draw a half circle. This hand has to remain up, so my left arm, right leg, take all my weight. This circles back, up, and now if there's a fight, I'm in a standing position, in a fighting stance, where I take my wrestling type position if we're in a tournament. Okay, so you stuck around, you got all those basic positions. Let me show you some things you're probably not gonna be able to pull off, but are super fun to work on. An Imanari roll, you can do this from a bunch of different positions, okay? So from standing, for example, the way I do it is I shoot it kind of like a low single leg if you are into wrestling. So I'm gonna go down, change my level as if I'm gonna do a low single like this. But instead of this grip, I'm gonna invert. My hand is pinky down right here. I'm gonna go thumb out and down to grip Stewart's ankle. Second hand can come to the knee. Now, this doesn't look like a great position for me, so you gotta move fast. Curl up, foot weaves in between both of his. This can be on his hip to stop him from coming down and crushing me. And then finally, I turn, 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 and you end up in a 50-50 position, which is a legal leg lock position in jiu-jitsu. Okay, so another way you can do that same in Minari, we're gonna trick them into thinking maybe we're gonna do a technical stand-up. So perhaps I was playing guard, made some separation, come here, up, but not all the way, right back into that 50-50, drop them. Another inventive way of doing that in Minari roll is from the double guard pull. So whatever position you're playing here, you could have maybe your leg was over, under, but I'm gonna also scoop this just like I did before. I'm gonna roll, I'm inverted, and I've gotta get my legs back underneath, right to the 50-50. Kinda of hard to do slow. So when you drill this at first, we're in this position. When you scoop under, my shoulder goes down. I wanna start getting this leg ready right away. This foot has to go right underneath the outside of his leg. Here it is, pull myself in. Imanari roll from a double guard pull. Okay, so from this position, maybe Stuart's playing guard or getting ready to do a technical stand-up. When they reach and they grab your collar, they're holding on to you. So I can simply drape my arm over or I can grab his collar. I'm not too worried about this going anywhere because he's got me. From here, I'm gonna throw this leg up right there, jump into a flying triangle. <clears throat> Finish with the legs. He's probably gonna come on top, squeeze. Okay, so again, when they grab your collar, just think good. The harder they hold on, the better. In fact, I can pull away, making him grip harder. Then all you're doing, you can position this hand on the arm, like I said, on the collar. You can even go to the back of the head, wherever you're comfortable. My back leg here, I'm gonna take a great big step over his shoulder. And you can see, I've got one arm trapped between both of my legs like a tr traditional triangle. When I sit, I go to my hip and I encourage him to come up so I can post to make it easier, up, Cut the angle, and then here we are, right into a tight triangle choke. Go.
All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this. So just to kind of recap, what we went through is just some very basic positions like balance, side control, what they entail, what you have to do to score those points. Then we went into very basic submissions, right? How to lock different limbs, anything from the ankle all the way to choking the throat. Then some very basic movements you can do all by yourself, which I encourage you to do. Anytime you turn on Netflix at home, get on that carpet, practice some bridging, practice some shrimping. It's going to go a long way. And then that bonus content. I promise if you stick with Jiu Jitsu, you're going to be able to do that. No problem. Make a highlight reel. Plus it's fun. Jiu Jitsu is one of the most fun things, the most fun sports you can participate in. The community is tight and I know it can benefit you a ton. Do me a quick favor, like, subscribe this and check out my next video.